Well, I think the top challenges for neuroscience are to figure out a way to link genes with cognition and brain structure and behavior. To be able to take the entire flow of information from how genes influence brain development to how brain development and architecture influence behavior and individual differences and capacities and abilities. The challenges facing the music industry and the challenges facing neuroscience have one point of intersection. Ultimately, artists, musical artists, and as a special case of you know, visual artists and sculptors and dancers, writers, artists and scientists are both in pursuit of the truth. Ultimately, that's what they're after. And that's a challenge. There are a lot of distractions from it. There are market forces. There are competing uh, things that pull at you. In science, it's often a mistake to follow where the money is or where the grant money is. That may not lead you in necessarily the right direction. And you see the same problem with art. The artist can be lured away by a product or something that sells, which isn't necessarily the most truthful expression of, of the ultimate goal. In the next five years in neuroscience, I think that the big breakthroughs are going to involve neurochemistry. We're just now at the cusp of being able to see where different hormones and neurochemicals go in the brain. We've got radioactive tags for dopamine. We'll soon have them for serotonin and other neurotransmitters. And what we've been doing for the last 10 or 20 years is making maps of the brain to better understand the cartography, the interconnections between intricate and related processes uh, of neural circuitry. But that's only part of the story. There's also a chemical story. And being able to track where the chemicals go is going to be a big accomplishment, which I think we'll see in the next five years. The music industry is undergoing a very different kind of transformation now because of really the, the disappearance of copyright and, and intellectual property there. Uh, artists, I think, have a right to be paid for their work. I mean, if you think about it, uh, as Sandra Day O'Connor said, copyright is a cornerstone of a free society. It's what allows a person to create and feel as though they're going to be justly compensated for it. Do you really want to have your favorite songwriter doing it for a hobby after they've waited tables all day long? Or do you want them to be able to spend as much time as necessary to learn to play their instrument and to craft a good uh, piece of music? I think that you know, figuring out a way to compensate rights holders for their creative works is a, an important challenge. And I think we'll figure that out in the next five years. There are a number of physical changes that occur in the brain as a function of listening to or playing music. So if you learn to play a musical instrument, the part of your brain that is coordinating the movements of, say, your right hand uh, and your left hand, I'm pointing to the opposite sides of the brain because it's contralateral. The right side of the brain controls the left hand. Those parts increase in their volume. In other words, learning to play the violin or the guitar will increase the cortical representation that controls those motor movements. Now you can say, oh, well, I, I'm not sure I want my brain to change uh, if I learn an instrument. But that's really what learning is. It's brain changes. It's, uh, it's the way a neuroscientist would describe learning. Anything that you learn sets up a new state and a new pathway in the brain. Learning is a change of brain state. fMRI or functional MRI has really been one of the most popular tools over the last 20 years uh, for understanding the nature of the musical brain, either for people who are playing music or listening or composing. And it's taught us a lot about different circuits in the brain and their separability. So for example, it may not seem obvious, but pitch is processed in one part of the brain, rhythm in another, the sound of a musical instrument, its timbre in yet another, the loudness in another. They all come together later in the brain, and we know this through functional neuroimaging. 